Well, let's get started. Welcome, everybody. My name is Heidi. I am the founder and chief executive guru at a company called The Mice Guru. And the Mice Guru is originally a destination management company based here in Norway. So we produce all types of mice events from the smallest meetings to the la largest brand activations for all types of industries. And then this, in this session, I will tell you a little bit more about how we pivoted into more digital, virtual, hybrid, how we went completely crazy during the pandemic in redefining our services. I am sitting in my office in Norway right now. Thanks, Jonas. The background is my bubble room. I love it very much as well. Well, so let me sh start by showing you a little introduction to actually who we are as a company so you get a sense for what we deliver. So there you have it. And then came the pandemic. And of course, we don't have to dive into what happened because we've all been through it. We've all lived it. And in the events industry, it's been devastating for so many of us. But luckily, we had a mindset of we were kind of thinking forward already since the beginning of the pandemic and thinking, okay, there's something we have to do here. There's some new services we have to develop because this is not going to change. This is not going anywhere and our future will be completely different. So we started by doing lots of learnings and uh, actually diving deeper into all things digital and virtual. We took new certifications. We went on courses. We really learned as much as possible, starting testing out lots of tech, event tech tools, broadcast tools, whatever you can imagine, and attended hundreds of virtual events. And if you remember, I'm pretty sure you've attended quite a few yourself. In the beginning, it was all exciting, and we were eager to learn more. We were eager to get together and analyze what the state of the industry is and where we're headed. And we were estimating the time this will last and what we will be doing in a couple of months uh, after the, the start of the pandemic. But it all became a bit bland. Bit by bit, we we started noticing that most of the virtual events were quite similar, quite similar in the way they were presented, quite similar in the way they delivered keynotes, lots of speakers talking about the same stuff over and over and over again. And that's when we started thinking, OK, we need to develop services here to elevate that and to bring back emotion, to do things differently and better. So this is how we started thinking. And instead of just sitting and waiting it out and, and thinking, OK, this is it. We're going to have to wait until people can travel to Norway again. We started developing those services one by one. And we started engaging with people in a different way, building new types of collaborations, and also listening to what the needs were. And then bit by bit, building understanding from our side. So we started profiling our services completely differently. We started saying we're not doing classic event production anymore, but we're doing virtual and digital. Uh, we are doing community building differently. We are looking into how social media and digital marketing is evolving so rapidly. We are looking into who we need to be online and how we will be digitally present in a better way. We saw so many companies just taking a step back 
and there was a real what we call digital angst right people were scared how are we going to do this how are we how are we going to approach this and do things differently how are we even going to survive and how are we going to work remotely and get our results and reach our goals it was all very very tricky so we tried to develop services that made that easier for companies and that is not only the event production itself that changed a lot but also of course diving into those event tech uh, suppliers the tools trialing and erroring doing lots and lots of demos oh my god i cannot tell you how many demos we did tools to integrate connectivity tools engagement tools and we noticed as well that a lot of uh, event planners but also companies went to uh, search for the quick fix solution. So they wanted to buy a specific software and a specific tool, and then that's it. Now we do everything on, on uh, Teams or we do everything on Zoom, and it doesn't matter what type of event we, we run. It does, doesn't matter what kind of goal each event has. We'll just do everything here. Can you imagine? I mean, it sounds crazy as I say it. It's actually almost the same as saying your internal meetings and your yearly kickoffs and your supply your events and your client events and your anniversaries and all of your different types of conferences, summits, whatever it may be, are just basically in the same ballroom with the same format and the same concept. That's absolutely not the right way to do things. So we needed to bring something different and build on understanding digital strategy which incorporates a lot of components and also a building knowledge in what we can do better and showcase it, show people like, look, how about you do things differently in, instead of just copy pasting what everybody else is doing. So if you have a look at the word cloud, I have a word cloud active in the, in the chat. I'm not sure if you can access it at the moment, but the question is, what is the first thing that comes to mind when I say digital strategy there there are no wrong answers here you can just basically also drop it here in the chat if you're on zoom uh whatever comes to mind just let me know do you think of i don't know social media do you think about your bike whatever it is give me a couple of words uh, uh, the first thought that pops into your head when i say digital strategy go ahead I had in our event that we will dive deeper into right now and discuss a lot of people saying, for example, uh, I think about marketing, I think about um, how to leverage technology to build a strategy within the business. Um, there were a lot of people saying, I don't really know, I have absolutely no idea. And that's also a great indicator, because that is what we did we de developed that understanding and those services and then we wanted to showcase it better to deliver clarity on where we're headed so that's how our consultancy on digital strategy got born and the first way we decided to showcase it is by building a disruptive event and disruption you might think what is disruption it's basically breaking the status quo. So no more copy paste events, no more similar style panel sessions over and over and over again, but doing something differently and especially bringing back emotion into events. And we did that in a multitude of ways. So now I would like to show you actually a little um, indicator of a video that shows you a behind the scenes of our event. So you can get a full understanding of what it was like, and then we'll dive deeper into things. Welcome to the Digital Disruptor Recap. live at FOMO in Stavanger and globally around the world for the Digital Disruptor. And we are ready to disrupt. I hope you're ready to disrupt with us.
that is going to be a wonderful hybrid event you know i'm i'm just looking forward to seeing a a, a well done hybrid event happen because well i for one have not experienced one at all creating an experience showcasing the possibilities so as a company being present you will feel it and live it instead of just having speaker after speaker talk about stuff So we are the Digital Disruptor. We've got about 20 minutes to go till kickoff. So everybody is running around, getting, <laughs> getting ready for everything. Uh, we have a sound check right now. The video guys are sending out all the links, making sure everything's up and running. And there we go. Now we've got Sabrina doing her sound check. So we're all very excited. You know, everyone is still kind of running around and trying to get everything into place. Our live in-person audience is about to arrive. Um, and so, you know, it's going to be awesome to see it all come together. I am right here tuning in from Barcelona. I'm super excited to be here today to talk about disruption, innovation, everything to do with how to make this digital strategy that we all need to be doing, make it better. So I'm very excited to be here today. It's about moving people and we forget how to do that, especially digitally, because we know how to do that by producing events. But how do we move our audience when they are sitting in front of their screens? Is it boring webinars? Is it Zoom meetings, team meetings? You can do way better than that. You can really give them something that... Oh. It, that was Didi. That's Didi, Didi likes to disrupt. <laughs> What about people with food allergies? No, that was a no because. <laughs> <laughs> Jason, also take a look at our virtual audience because I want to hear back from you guys as well. You have this amazing imagination. English people dream that we can win a football game on penalties. <laughs> I know it's amazing imagination. It'll never happen. The number one barrier to innovation, you told me. I don't have time to think, but the split second you gave yourself time to think, you stepped into the shower, big idea, walked away from the argument, killer one-liner. How do I get there on demand? The digital strategy to me is how you leverage technology to create value to your company uh, in any department. Disrupt or be disrupted. But what does disruption mean to you? But this is actually what disruption means. It's all about change. And if you're looking for a playbook for innovation, it doesn't exist. Um, it just requires you to be nimble, flexible, experimental, and challenge these old narratives. And so that's what we're going to do to get today. And they cannot say no to your dream. We like to say dreams are only plans waiting to be executed. You just need to do it. That was amazing. I love that. That was, that's beautiful. The industrial model of managing work is over. You know, 30 minute meetings, cubicles, I gotta get to the office at eight o'clock, um, I gotta be in this particular city, it's done. Industrial model of managing work is done. So I think um, maybe we can do some more learning before we leave. What do you think, Didi? Enough learning, more fun. DJ tasted, turn up the volume. I 
know you're having a drink. You're like ready to party already. There you go. As you can see, it is quite the event and it was quite the challenge to put it into place. It's true, uh, Jonas, it was very high quality uh, production level um, and you did things completely differently. Let me go back to that workout just in a moment. I saw some, uh, some words there, social media, video, chat, young people. That comes back a lot as well. Like a, a lot of the leadership in companies, like uh, senior managers are feeling very, very um, disrupted in another sense. They are feeling scared that they cannot keep up with the developments, etc. That's why we also incorporated our future leaders into this event. I see internet, I see trans transformation, of course, all of those things are key components in digital strategy. But the main components are actually your digital marketing. So that's everything from so your social media to how you communicate. And let me tell you, everything has changed on social media. Uh, since 2019. So you need to do things differently with how you activate your audiences there because your audiences are much more socially aware on digital platforms right now. Um, it includes how the way you do your meetings internally, but also how you invite your clients, your suppliers, your partners. If you used to do that in person, how do you do it now? Are they just invited in, into your regular, very static platform or are they in engaged? Are they inspired? How do you deliver your message of innovation? Because if you just show it, showcase it in a very poor, very classic, traditional way, how does the how does that affect the value of the innovation? It's actually, it gives you a very negative impact. So you need to rethink all of those things. And that's how we started with the ideation process for the digital disruptor. We were bored. We were bored with everything that we saw online. And we as event planners thought, okay, there has to be a way to do this better. Why is no one doing anything better? Why is everybody just talking and talking and talking about hybrid formats, but not delivering? a hybrid format? Why are we not better at connecting, at engaging, at communicating in different ways? So we started building that event with that in mind. What is a digital strategy? How can we help our audience understand it? Then we brought, brought in some global leaders on the topics of innovation and disruption. You saw them in the video. One was Duncan Wardle, former head of innovation and creativity at Disney, who was very engaging with our audiences. Then one was Sean Canungo, uh, who was named by Forbes as the best virtual uh, disruption keynote speaker of 2021. And not only did we invite those speakers, but instead of having them sit at their desks, they were in actual proper studios. So we had Duncan in his studio in New York. We had Sean in a theater hall in Canada, in Edmonton. He was literally driving up with his car to the theater, going into the theater and speaking live to our audience. So we figured out solutions and ways to connect our virtual and live audiences better with different styles of video mixing connectivity, talking through a video wall. So you had our audience in Norway projected on a large screen in a theater hall in Canada, whilst Sean was standing there on the stage and having a conversation with someone at the bar in Norway. So that's kind of the connectivity that we created with lots of specific tools. And let me tell you, it was quite a challenge, but it was also super fun. It was all about experimentation. And we increased engagement and connectivity through that, through the use of technology differently, the use of video mixing and production differently, doing hybrid um, networking sessions, for example, with tools where you can literally normally you would uh, connect with each other in a kind of network car a carousel during virtual events. Now imagine you have live stages for your uh, live stations for your live audience to participate and connect 
video to video with your virtual attendees without them feeling confined in a little video box and without it being like a regular type of uh, a video meeting. It was all very special and very different. We incorporated audio engagement because we saw the development of, Club, of Clubhouse and Clubhouse is already kind of phased out right now in the event industry. So we are taking that to the next level. What can we do better in terms of audio engagement where you build a story and you have an activity for an audience, a new type of experience that inspires them, that brought so, so many good remarks afterwards. We got an intense feedback based on that because people had never experienced something like that before. So why don't you do things differently? Why don't you try things differently? And it was all about bringing back that emotional value. If you produce in-person, in-destination events, wherever you may be, your core strategy is always first thinking about what's your goals like what are the intentions of this event what about your values your corporate identity how are you showcasing yourself and how are you connecting it to the place you are you have a proper strategy so why is nobody doing that for virtual and hybrid events or not as much because people are still trying to figure things out. They focus too much on making the technology work and the bigger picture gets lost. But that's where your results get lost. So it's very, very important to go back to that initial uh, strategy of building emotion and then envisioning what your event should be like and then going to find the right tools to make it happen rather than being stuck with a software or a tool that you have to use because of corporate policy or whatever it is and then you have to just stick within the box and you have to color within the lines as Dun Duncan Wardle would say that is not a culture of innovation or experimentation so what I like to say is basically in Envisioning your reality is creating it. That is true for everything in life, I believe. You can wake up in the morning with wishes and desires. Uh, you want to accomplish things. And when it comes to events, you can often, as event professionals or as a corporate event planner, you may come up with this crazy idea like in a blink of a second and you might think oh wow wouldn't it be cool if we did it like that but then very very briefly after you already dismiss it because ah oh, it's probably going to be too expensive it's probably going to be too difficult we'll never come we we'll never convince our leadership we'll never get the right sponsors on board etc etc you just break it down before you start stop doing that just go for it whichever vision you have go and start realizing it step by step because you can do it and by being different and by being more experimental than others you are actually positioning yourself on the top of the digital divide so the times we live in right now we call them the digital experience economy most of our business is now online but also most of our presence our visit our visibility, our message, our uh, anything we do is basically now more important digitally than non-digital. So how are you leveling up to accomplish that and to be on top? We can see a lot of smaller companies leveling up and disrupting the big, bigger players. And there are actually plenty of studies indicating that, that the big international corporations are scared to be disrupted by startups, people who have less rigid structures, who can swiftly change and adapt, who can bring in new voices, new collaborators, younger generations, and all of that is actually very, very important for growth. They say that you cannot grow in the coming years without innovation, disruption, and experimentation. And experimentation means trying lots of stuff, new stuff all the time. And it's okay to fail. It's okay if you tried out something and it didn't perfectly work technically. You tried it 
and other things will work out amazingly great. So, I mean, it's all about trying and not being fearful, just having that culture of innovation. And then, of course, before you start preaching digital strategy and brand awareness and uh, new emotional virtual hybrid digital events, you need to have your own digital strategy in place. So you need to go through the steps yourself and think about how, what am I actually doing right now? What is different from two, three years ago? Where are we headed? Did our clients change? Our segments change? Are we operating in different fields and fields? And how do we need to adjust? So basically, we when we talk about digital strategy, we start with a roadmap for identifying your goals and where you are right now. What's your core business, your audience? How are you currently creating value? Are you still just sending out emails? Are you still just making two picture posts a week on Instagram? Uh, they are things that need to be revisited. Then the second step will be just that, reviewing, rethinking how you are delivering your message, because there's plenty of new ways to do it. And now that we are in this disruptive phase, we can see that there is a lot of movement in terms of online community building, online digital platforms where you can invite your guests, and that can be platforms that are alive. They can have your weekly news, you can do interviews, you can welcome guest speakers, year round if you wanted to, to build your digital home and your digital brand. I've also added a couple of polls uh, to this session. So I would definitely like to check out how you feel about those. Um, there's a couple of questions there. What do you think is most important in hybrid design? Uh, did you or the company you work for design a new post-pandemic digital strategy? Uh, and also, do you get excited about hybrid formats? Is it for you or is it something that just scares you and you really wish that we can just go back to our old ways immediately. Let me tell you, we're not going back. We are not going back whatsoever. The digital evolution has been accelerated and it will continue. And of course, we're all eager to hop on planes right now, including me, like, please take me out, take me anywhere I'm going. But uh, as much as we love meeting in person right now, companies also realize the value of digital meetings. So I am a firm believer that we will find that balance between in-person events and virtual events, and then also the added value of hybrid formats. You don't need to turn every single event into a hybrid event. It's quite intense it's it's uh, it's uh, production wise very intense it might be higher budgets that you need to consider so it's not for your weekend meeting not every meeting or event needs to be a hybrid event but it offers tremendous value in enlarging your audiences, collecting data, doing a lot of things that we could not do before. And we are definitely going in that direction that companies will say, okay, let's do our massive yearly meeting where we have all of the key players in our industry present in a hybrid format. We invite them maybe 100, 200, 1,000, 2,000 on site, and you have several thousands tuning in from home. And then you can create an experience that's equally valuable to the virtual audience as the live audience. The virtual audience will have experiences that the live audience doesn't have, so that creates a bit of FOMO, and the live audience will have access to local experiences that the virtual cannot have. But you can also interconnect them in much better ways and design that engagement and that connectivity that brings the emotion and that elevates your brand and your event and corporate goals. So it's about creating the experiences, the communities. I've put a, a term onto bringing back emotion to events. I call it emo currency. It is the emotion you deliver for people investing in you with their screen time. Those people who sit at home and who you want to be focused on your message, on your, on your events. They need to get something in return. And I like to think if I'm able to um, cook dinner or do something else whilst the event is on, it's not engaging enough. It's too boring. We've all heard about the term uh, fatigue, Zoom fatigue, screen fatigue. 
There is no such thing. If your event is engaging, then you will not be fatigued. You can sit in front of Netflix forever. You can watch TV for hours and you don't get fatigued. Because why? Because you're entertained, you're engaged. It's fun watching. That should be the case for your events as well. So, and then to achieve that corporate goal, you also need to get your employees on board, get everybody involved, get everybody to understand what we're talking about, digital strategy, where we're headed, but also how you want to do better, how you want to be innovative and experiment. Everybody needs the creative freedom to be able to do that. So that starts with your own teams. That starts with how you put your teams together on each project. And as I mentioned, innovation and experimentation are key here. So is there any chance I can see the results of the, of the polls? Can I do that on the page? Or can you share it with me in the chat? That would be great because I'm quite curious to know what you think. And also I am very much open to questions. So if you have any questions, you may drop them either on the platform, on the main platform or in Zoom in the chat as well. Uh, I am definitely available to answer uh, all of them either now or afterwards uh, when we connect, let me see what is happening here. The most important to you in hybrid design is 25% uh, voted equal value for both virtual and live audience. Yes, okay. 50% connectivity and engagement. And then nobody went for production quality. Okay, that's also very interesting. Content, and nobody said all of them. To me, it's definitely a combination of all of them. Uh, but in terms of production quality, I do agree not everything needs to be very, very high in production. But for example, what we did with the digital disruptor that did require a very high level of production because we had uh, seven cameras, we had augmented reality studios. So we had basically um, a uh, live audience engagement moderator standing in the middle of the audience and in front of a green screen connected to a video stream from a speaker in another location and brought together into a beta software that transformed the setting into an augmented reality studio. And that can be anything, a studio, it can be a show floor, it can be a virtual venue to make the virtual side of your sessions much more engaging. And those were then streamed back into our general mix projected back onto the video wall of our main audience. So it was quite a complex and uh, uh, challenging uh, performance that we had to pull through there. So if, you, if you're looking to create that kind of an environment and make it super engaging, engaging then I do suggest that you um, invest a little bit more on the production side of things. Do we have any questions at this time? Let's see. Let's see who gets excited about hybrid. Do you get excited? Um, half of you says mind blown by the new opportunities they present. I will uh, definitely agree with you on that. It's incredible. And we're only getting started, especially when it comes to also the, the data that you can collect. You can literally track absolutely everything, both on the live and virtual side, which is of tremendous value to any corporate uh, brand. Um, someone said, I'm not really i've not really made up my mind yet that is also totally fine because there's a lot of communication happening and a lot of people are saying a lot of different things there's so many opinions there's so much new knowledge so it's definitely up to every single one of us an individual choice to make if we are uh, on team hybrid or not and then someone said i hate the idea and would rather stick to in person or entirely virtual and that's also totally valid i mean there is no way that we all need to be delivering hybrid formats. Our industry is 
extremely varied and has a whole lot of different types of professionals. So if you are perfect, uh, perfectly fine with in-person events and you're really great at it and you want to do just that and have your niche business in in, uh, in-person or virtual events, then do that. Do whatever feels right for you. But then in that case, I would suggest that you do check out the right partners for when you get that request, maybe from within your own company, maybe be from a client and they want to do hybrid and you're like oh my god no I can't do this will you then also lose your in-person business and just let it slip away or will you have the right partners in place to say okay look we are doing the life part in this let's collaborate let's work on this together and let's not be competitors but let's be uh, con colleagues as we like to call it the way we've started collaborating is also entirely different it's much more internationalized it's much more remote and every project now is, uh, requires different skill sets some may need more event technologists other may need, others may need more marketeers or sponsor specialists. Others may need more hands-on production skills. There's a lot to consider. And we at the Mice Guru also build our teams based on the scope of work and based on each event and each client. So that is, I think, also a nice way to um, do things. We have a question here. Um, how do you create a Netflix experience for hybrid events? Well, there are actually a whole lot of type of ways to do that with the digital uh, disruptor we uh, really increased engagement with all of those elements that I mentioned by having your audience being constantly surprised at what's happening you are delivering emotion you are engaging and you are entertaining like, for example, your speaker in New York who's running around drawing things ask, is asking you to draw something in front of your screen or in the live audience, and then you have to show your results, and then suddenly someone asks you to close your eyes and listen and tell us the story you came up with by the sound, the audio you heard, like how did you get inspired, what was the storyline for you. It is constantly engaging and entertainment, so you keep watching and you don't don't want to miss a single second of it it's like your favorite series i don't know what your favorite series is um i've just watched squid games i know there's probably a bunch of you who have as well that is also a great analogy to our event industry like how far are you willing to go to bring that emotion um so those are the things it's the fun elements it's the connectivity it's you've heard also in the earlier sessions gamification interaction uh, integrating tools that allow for that. So all of those things will make your experience more and more valuable. And that is basically it for me. If you have no further questions at this time, I, of course, invite you wholeheartedly to connect with me. I am pretty much everywhere. You can find me, of course, on LinkedIn by my name. And you can also find me on most social channels, Instagram, Twitter, even TikTok. You'll find me at the Mice Guru. And you can also, of course, always drop me an email uh, and ask me anything you want. I'm always happy to have a chat uh, to talk about your own digital strategy or maybe brainstorm ideas for your next event. If you want to come to Norway with your in-person events, we are experts in Norway and can deliver the highest level of experiential design. So please feel free to get in touch with me. You also have my QR code here. This is a QR code to my link tree where you can find a lot of the content uh, and channels that I'm talking about. Um, thank you very much for joining. I hope to come to Norway. I see Jonas is, is, is writing someday. It doesn't have to be someday, Jonas. You know, envision it and make it your reality. Find the right department, the right client, and let's have a chat. And before you know it, you're on that plane. And I love that your favorite series is dark. I haven't seen it yet, but I will definitely check it out now. Uh, so thank you so much for joining, everybody. Have a wonderful rest of your day and a great weekend when it comes. And I wish you lots of fun on the rest of the event. Take care.